there's a lot you can do with the different units in Shogun too. And when you throw in province related improvements like blacksmiths and encampments, it can get complicated. Is the weaponsmith better or the armorer? This might sound disappointing, but it depends. But first, let's make things simpler by eliminating the buildings you'll almost never go for. Hunting lodges give an extra 5 accuracy to ranged infantry, which is barely worth anything and takes up a whole building slot. Now, I know you can stack it with a master bowmaker, but that requires quite a lot of chi research to get. Most of your units will be melee infantry, so I don't think it's worth dumping this much effort into improving ranged infantry. Then there's barracks. They simply double the effects of base level encampments, nothing else. Not as situational as hunting lodges, but in my experience I only build these in late game when I'm no longer recruiting that many units and need the fastest replenishment I can get. That leaves us with the Jujutsu Dojo Proving Grounds and Armory for encampment upgrades that are worthwhile in the early to mid game. What to go for depends on what you'll be recruiting. Remember that armor and charge bonus are the only unit stats that don't increase with experience. So when it comes to increased melee attack, you might find it's better to use the building slot for something else and just have your troops gain experience through battle. Otherwise, it tends to work best for units with relatively low attack values, like Naginata Samurai or Bo Samurai who will be manning castle walls. A plus 5 charge bonus is a nice improvement, but you'll have to put in a bit of work micromanaging units to give them as many charges as possible. To make it more worthwhile, you should combine this with a blacksmith upgrade. The plus 4 melee attack from a master weaponsmith applies constantly, whether the unit is charging or not. If you go this path, you can have a Yari Ashigaru doing 9 more damage on the charge than it will be able to out of the box. Yari Ashigaru have a very weak charge out of the box, so this can make them a more well-rounded unit. The armory is the simplest upgrade, the easiest one to take advantage of. Armor has a wide-ranging effect, improving units' sturdiness in melee and resilience to archer fire. Both your melee and range units will be benefiting from it. This is also one of the only ways to improve your unit's armor. Ashigaru, Nodachi Samurai, and Warrior Monks benefit the most from these, while your other Samurai units will become even more robust. Cavalry are more reliant on the charge, so if you're mainly using a province to recruit cavalry, it's better going for improved charge or attack instead. So what about the Weaponsmith versus Armorer debate? Well, it comes down to what you want. Do you want to go all in on one path, creating heavily armored units or units with beefed up attack? Or do you want a more well-rounded army? For example, with a Master Armor and a Jujutsu Dojo. There's also the War Horse buildings that add charge bonus to your cavalry. It takes a while to research the top War Horse building, all for a measly plus 5 charge bonus. Light Cavalry and Yari Cavalry already have high charge bonuses, so the improvement isn't that great relatively speaking. The bonus also applies only to Cavalry, so the investment doesn't have a very good payoff overall. Having one castle with 3 or 4 building slots for recruiting Samurai infantry and your preferred Cavalry type with encampment is more cost effective and just more convenient overall. There's still one specialty we haven't gone over, Morale Boosting Temples. Aside from general skills and retainers, this is the only way to directly improve your unit's morale, and it's possibly the most useful of all because the main weakness of Ashigaru is morale. Assuming you have the province, you only need about a thousand Koku and a few turns to gain access to these bonuses. But we're asking the wrong questions here. To be honest, this all barely matters in the grand scheme of things. It takes a lot of money, time, and resources to be able to get this infrastructure in place. You'll need an upgraded castle, the buildings, the correct provinces, and the research to be able to even recruit your preferred unit with all those upgrades. And while you're doing that, other factions are gaining more territories and strengthening their generals. So should you ignore upgrading units entirely? No, but all you really need is one upgraded town where you can recruit samurai and cavalry with an encampment for better quality troops and faster replenishment. As you expand, you'll come across upgraded provinces, and I find it's just more efficient to recruit units from whatever the AI has built and work them into your strategy, rather than slowing down to remodel the province to your liking. Getting experience on your units and ranking up your generals to get stand and fight is way more important than any unit upgrades. Instead, you should be investing in upgrades so that you can more easily replace valuable units in the later stages of the campaign. Remember, a good battle plan and effective usage of the different unit types matters way more than a stat buff. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. And let me know in the comments if you have any suggestions for anything Shogun Tour strategy related that you would like me to cover.
Thank you, and I'll see you all next time.